and let's go to the Kanye West interview with Piers Morgan. I haven't watched the whole thing. I've heard it's ripping crazy. We're not going to watch the whole thing either because it's, it's an hour and 40 minutes. So please, you know, forgive me if I'm not going to sit here for an hour and 40 minutes and hear fucking Kanye blame the Jews for everything going wrong in his fucking life. But there's the title of the video. If you want to check it out yourself, please do. Because I've had comments on the in my comment section. People saying, you're talking too much. You're interrupting the thing. It's like, brother, I'm not uploading these videos or sharing them so you can watch them through my channel. They're already available on very popular channels that you can check out right here. So if you want to see it by yourself and you don't want any interruptions, you don't want to hear my annoying voice, then please, for the love of God, check them out directly at the source. But we're going to pause and clip it and hang around and fuck around here while we watch it live. So let's go and let's hear what Kanye has to say with good old Piers Morgan gonna call me names for my truth but these experiences that i'm telling you about are factually things that i've went through and things that i refuse to keep going through and things that i'm not going to let my children go through and things that i'm not going to let my peers go through no pun intended <laughs> well look we are most certainly uncensored on this show yay and i want to give you the time and the platform to really when the british person says yay it just sounds funny isn't it we are uncensored on here, yay. <laughs> Explain yourself, uh, because I think that sometimes sound bites about people, uh, perhaps taken out of context sometimes, can create a very distorted view of what a person really thinks. Um, what do you think, looking back over the last few weeks in particular, what do you think have been the biggest misconceptions about you? Well, I think there's a left agenda to silence anyone that goes against the agenda. Let's go back to uh, Trump running for office. <laughs> What's the biggest misconception about you? Yay, Kanye. Let's go back to Trump back in office. Okay. <laughs> back in 2015, Everyone that was around me in my industry, in the entertainment industry, told me that my life would be over. I would be on the wrong side of history. I've even had threats to my life for wearing the Trump hat. And it, it even ended up in, you know, destroying my family and also uh, making it where I have to raise my children differently because I actually am... Uh, a person that's classified as black, you know, I classify myself as Jew. Uh... <laughs> I'm going to get this video. I'm going to find this video, but it reminds me of this video. I need to try and find it. I'm going to email it to myself so I can find it now. But this whole classification this whole like I am what I say I am kind of thing, um, identification thing has gone too far because this is what he's doing. Let me see if I can find this video because he sounds like this kid that I saw on TikTok that I thought was fucking hilarious and also got me thinking about how old I am in terms of, you know, I don't really don't think I have any friends who are like this. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, let me see if I can find it. Bear with me one second. It was a clip of this girl basically talking about her, how she identifies. And I thought it was absolutely hilarious. Let me see if I can clip it. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? If I can't find it in two seconds, I'll have to move on. But it's a perfect clip to go alongside what he's saying here. Can I find it? Can I find it? Can I find it? Oh, I can't. F yeah, I can't find it. Yes, there it is. So let me share it to myself now via email. And I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. But I think, I think this is really, really, really amazing. Because I think he's essentially using the left side politics in terms of you know i identify as this or identify as that as being a, a thing that he's kind of riding on the back of right because if you can identify yourself as a fairy or whatnot identify as you know they them or whatnot he's now using that as something to also say I identify as jew which is really really kind of insulting <laughs> in a weird way but i don't really know how insulting it is but it's really interesting so let me show you this video that i thought kind of reminded me of this this is this video that i saw on flipping reddit that i thought was absolutely hilarious uh 
bless the kid as well because i think they're super young anyway in general and i think that's what happens when you're young you just you know you're kind of fumbling around trying to figure out what your identity is you're not really too sure especially when it comes to sexuality and all that sort of stuff it's kind of difficult to kind of you know um feel comfortable in your own skin especially in the world that we're living in at the moment so let me let, let me let, let me see if let me see if i can put up for you and again just i think this is kind of what kanye is doing i think this is this is what he's doing let me see if i can, let me see if you guys agree <laughs> look at this this is flipping crazy why do I call myself gay if my pronouns are he, they, and I'm dating a girl? Well, um, oh, <laughs> That's what Kanye is doing. I identify as Jew. <laughs> I identify as he, he well, well I think this person identifies as he they even though technically you'd say they're a girl I don't really know and then they say they're, they're not lesbian because they're attracted to it's it's, it's really interesting it's, it's kind of a young person thing I don't really know how to pass all that thing it's not really my fucking expertise or field of expertise I don't want to get even involved in it but this is flipping hilarious Shane Gillis got a chill for some Say that louder for y'all in the back if you want me to too. <laughs> you can identify as any gender you want and use whatever pronouns make you feel most comfortable. <laughs> Meaning you can feelings. Identify as a male, but use she her pronouns if that's what you like. <laughs> I identify as just me. <laughs> whatever that is. I'm just me, baby. And I like to use gay as an umbrella term, like how queer people use queer for themselves. Because that's what feels right to me. So <laughs> <laughs> that's basically Kanye. That's basically Kanye in whiteface. <laughs> he went on a fucking Holocaust denying fucking tour, bigotry tour, and now he's turning around telling people that he's a Jew. Yeah, I love you, Kanye. I swear to God. <laughs> people say I'm scared. <laughs> Oh, be cool be cool yeah i'm not saying anything more man i'm not adding any more commentary to that the video is what it is interpret how you want to interpret it i'm not adding any more any more thing into it it's on social media it's not me taking the piss or anything i'm free i'm 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 loving of all people accepting of everybody do what you want represent yourself how you like to represent and just keep loving everybody the same and we live in a good peaceful world did i, did I disclaim it that good enough yeah yeah let's move on let's move on <laughs> but uh, a person is classified that had been given that title in America as black in America that I'm supposed to stay in a block of a vote. You never heard the term white vote. So why is there a term black vote? How is that OK? It sounds just as racist as a black drinking fountain. And I'm my dad, you know, called me. He said, you know, the thing that the left fear about yay or makes me the most dangerous is I'm rich. And that's the point. Tupac told me back in the days. Not any longer, though. Not any longer. Because he's a billionaire, but I think some people have said a lot of his wealth comes from Yeezy. And at the moment, there looks like there's a lobby of people who are basically pushing. Um, or sorry, there's a, there's a group of people who are lobbying Adidas to end their relationship with Kanye, which would mean he would lose that production arm that's basically able to basically pump out all these Yeezys and all these different colorways and get the stocks all around the world and all that kind of good stuff. And obviously doing him himself in-house, he won't be able to do it to the same scale that Yeezy is doing yet. So that's some money taken off. And of course, there's, I guess some, there's some security as well in terms of the stocks or in terms of as a business, in terms of tying it in with a corporation. I don't really know too tough. But if they do successfully get his Yeezy Adidas deal and old a lot of his net worth will basically disappear then on top of that he's now currently being sued by the George Floyd family for 250 M's because they feel like he bring he brought a bunch of stress and unnecessary worry to them as a family because obviously he dis you know um he disagreed with the 
idea that flipping George Floyd died because of the police officer and he died actually as a case of fentanyl. That's what he's taking away from that flipping Candace Owens fucking documentary. So clearly there's an issue there. So if both those things happen, and let's say he doesn't actually have to pay the 250 M to George Floyd family, he's going to have to settle out of court anyway. That's still a lot of money. And if the Aida still gets taken away from him, that's a lot of money to take away from his net worth. So this idea that he's going to be council free and you'll be okay to kind of weather any storm because he's a billionaire is not true especially if all the banks turn him away then what is he going to do because jp morgan chase flipping closed his account right they were with they were happy to let him walk away with his 140 million that he said he had in there like this whole thing i have money so i can say what i want thing is a dangerous game to play you know you had to get your money right and, and then you go to war so i'm going to war you know, I don't, I don't have, I don't have endless resources. I only have like maybe, a, you know, honestly, only maybe $120 million in my account. But what I'm not going to let happen is I'm not going to let my kids take over Yeezy someday and have a boardroom telling them what to do and talking behind their back. I'm not going to let that happen to my children. So I have to fight right now. And the other powerful icons in black music, when they were at the top of the game, they didn't fight at that point. They were too afraid of losing whatever they had. So by the time they wanted to make a difference, by the time Bill Cosby wanted to buy NBC, he didn't have the Cosby show at that time. It's all well and good saying all this stuff, but let's remember, we're here because he said, Defcon free on Jews. We're here because White Lives Matter t-shirt, don't criticize it because it's my right to say what I want to say. That's why we're here, not because of him having a um, general grievance about how Aidas are treating him or, you know, not being happy at how his wife or ex-wife is treating him with the looking after the kids. No, we are here specifically because he declared war, like whatever, whatever the term is for jihad in the flipping Jewish religion. That's what he basically tried to do to them as people in real time. So now he's trying to pivot this and make it seem as if like he's some sort of crusader is insane. I'm to be able to stand up when they wanted to literally throw him in jail, you know, where they actually did throw him in jail. So people have to understand. Is he still saying Bill Cosby innocent? Stand <laughs> just the bravery. There's so many people everywhere. I know everyone can relate to being afraid to say what you're going to feel because you feel like you're going to, you know, you're going to lose something. So whether you agree with me or not, I believe people are going to feel the fact that someone is brave enough to say something. Every day I do five things that people have been historically killed for every day. And it's just, yo, I want to prove, first of all, I am Jew also. The 12 lost tribes of Hebrew. Do the math. Do your research on it. We have got our culture ripped from us and then told we were just simply void of color, which is another definition for black. But if we knew we were a culture and knew we were a people the way the Jewish people know, then we wouldn't abort ourselves. We wouldn't shoot each other dead in the streets and then rap about it. We wouldn't uh, brag about, you know, having sex with each other's wives. We would keep our families together and we would do business together. The most dangerous person for a uh, most dangerous place for a black person in America is actually in our mother's stomachs because 50% of. <laughs> now what? Now is he trying to cause war on all baby mothers out there? Any single mother out there who's contemplating terminating the birth of a child or whatever because of whatever reason they have for it is now in the line of sight of Kanye. You have to be afraid of him now. Like, what the hell is going on here? What are, what are we doing here? Black deaths a year in America is abortion currently. I mean, I can keep going, but I want to make it, hey, boom, well, yeah, well, ask no, me listen, questions, I, I, let's yeah, go. I don't, I don't want to jump in too much because I, I, here's what I honestly think. I think you have an extraordinary yeah. mind. You have a, a number of extraordinary talents. You're a musical genius. You're a, a fascinating public figure. Uh, what has been interesting to me is to watch the furore which has erupted in uh, the last few even, weeks. Even peers didn't say you're a fashion genius either. 
And that might be that might be the genesis. That might be the whole reason why we have this version of Kanye, you know. I'm just thinking about it now. The reason why we have this version of Kanye might be because everyone says he's a genius in music. They like his shoes, but no one ever says he's a fashion genius, fashion icon. No one ever says that. And that's always been the one thing he's been chasing, the approval of the fashion industry. And he's never got it. And in Kanye's life, everything that he pursues, he always gets. From going from a producer to a rapper, going from selling so many different albums or selling a certain number of albums, going from creating all these different sounds, going from uh, having a deal with Nike, going from having a deal with Louis Vuitton, all these type of things, he's always achieved them. Going from, you know, I think he said he always kind of pictured himself with Kim, even when he was Amber Rose. He, he, he got all the women he wanted in his life. But the one thing you could never get was the approval of the fashion industry. From the very moment he did that first show, that Yeezy show um, in 2012, I think. I think it's 2012, right? Let me see if I can get it up on here. Uh, Kanye. Oops. Kanye West show. Is it 2012? Vogue. I think it's 2012. It's the first one he ever did. Right? Yeah, I think this is the one. It's 2012. God almighty. My memory is sick, bruv. I know all the fashions. So, yeah, this is it. Um, It's fit funny, isn't it? I remember the fucking dates of fashion collections, but I don't know my home phone number off by heart. That's pretty crazy. Or my fucking NI number. I don't know that off by heart, but I can tell you the dates of fucking collections. So ever since this date, right, 20, 2011, this has kind of led us all the way towards, uh, where is it? Is it that one there? No, it's not that one. Where is this? This one, isn't it? Is this one? Yeah. That 2011 date has led us at this point. If Kanye would have got the approval that he seeks from the fashion industry, we would have never got this Kanye. Honestly, I don't think so we would have got it. But because he never got it, we've now had to kind of suffer through this guy. And this collection, looking back, wasn't that bad, really. At the time, it got absolutely lampooned and everybody hated it and stuff. But it wasn't as bad as people are making it out to be, to be honest, at the time that it was out there. I just remember it being a thing where he essentially bought himself a fashion show. He just went and bought a slot on the calendar, invited loads of people down, you know, hired all these people to work with him, lastminute.com, and they put together a really kind of slapdash collection. And I think none of this stuff actually made it to retail. It was just stuff he showed on the runway, and obviously everyone lampooned it and ripped it to pieces on the fucking press, but it never actually made it to stores. But it doesn't look that bad, though, does it, really? I don't think so, personally. For somebody's first ever outing, as a fashion designer and somebody kind of doing it on part time. I don't think it was as bad as people make it out to be, but because he didn't get the approval that he wanted, Oh Jesus, the back of that skirt is a bit questionable isn't it. He has never been the same. Those, uh, a liar. Was it? I think uh, I forgot the name of it. Who is it? A liar. I forgot who, who designed them collaboration wise, but regardless, like pretty decent collection. And ever since then, Kanye has never been the same guy ever again. And even Piers not recognizing his fashion genius must have kind of irked to him slightly. But anyway, let's get back to the interview. Weeks over a series of statements that you've made, which have caused, as you know, a lot of offense. And I guess before I get into them, I'm just curious as to whether you think there is a line for free speech. I Listen, I completely agree with you that there is a war against free speech, that people are, you know, treading on eggshells all the time, uh, terrified of expressing honestly held opinions in case they get cancelled. I think we're living in a really insidious era where liberals are behaving like fascists. So on that, you have absolutely my agreement. But my question for you is, do you believe there are limits to free speech? And if they are, what are they? Kanye has never thought about that question his entire life. He's never, he's never marinated or meditated on that idea or his position on it. Never. He's just got talking points. What Kanye is is a hot take machine. You, you give him a hot take or you sound, uh, you know, informed on the things that you're talking about. He just repeat it like a parrot. He doesn't have any real original thoughts on these kind of, what do you call it? Um, what, what do they call them? These, um these culture war issues. He doesn't really have a real stance on them at all. Zero. 
There are no limits to free speech. It's all context, right? Tarantino can write a movie about slavery where actually him and Jamie, they got the idea from me because the idea for Django, I pitched to Jamie Foxx and Quentin Tarantino as the video for Gold Digger. Uh, and then Tarantino turned it into a film. But in that <laughs> film, he puts a... <laughs> <laughs> of course he did. Only Kanye could come up with a movie idea like that, and it only him. He he creates a context where Leonardo DiCaprio is allowed to use the word <laughs> most multiple times within that context. So Hollywood's job is to frame things, and they allow what context what what content is accepted and what's not. We have our thoughts. That, you know, everyone has thoughts and ideas, and then people try to manipulate your thoughts and ideas. In order for humanity to move forward, we have to be free to think and then to actualize. I like the word. In Israel until 1947, United Nations voted and gave land away without the people's choice. There have never been white Jews in Israel like now. They have always been dark Arab skin. Hey, man. I'm not going to get involved in this, but thank you for the super chat, Dana McWhite, for the $9.99 .99 super chat. I do appreciate you, but I'm not going to get involved in the Jew conversation at all, in the slightest, no way, shape or form, because I'm trying to build this channel up to the point where I can quit my full-time job and I don't want to get fucking sneak code. I don't want to get Ethan Klein. I just want to skirt around, take the piss out of these dumb LA comedians and keeping LOLing at some cultural stuff, but I'm not getting involved in the Jew stuff. No way. I don't have 120 M's like Kanye. I can't fight that shit. <laughs> no way word actualize mm. better than uh, execute if you think about execute a negative negative word actualize to be more positive except for the fact that it has the word act in it <laughs> and everyone's an actor especially in hollywood i'm mean, as a, i'm like top five writers in human exist in human history so i really get into the way the power of words and i feel very akin to capote you know what's funny? I do agree with him that he may be the top five writers in human history, but he must be the bottom five in terms of articulation, like speaking wise. He doesn't, he can't sort out his thoughts. The one thing I've always kind of been annoyed at Kanye, especially being a Kanye fan, a Kanye fanboy at one point, was that everybody, especially on this forum I used to always post on called KTT2, where a lot of kind of Kanye sycophants kind of are on there, always making excuses for him. But at this point, some of them have turned their back on him and basically said, yeah, he's, he's too far gone. But I always remember when he would always go on those rants when he was on stage and stuff, people would be on those forums basically trying to put his rants into normal English, right? Or into lame man's words. And it always annoyed me that he needed like an army f of translators is, is basically around the world to sort out his thoughts and make her make sense. He couldn't just say what he wanted to say. It had to be this muddled thought that was just spat out there. We had to fucking swallow it. And then we were forced to listen to more until we got it. It was just annoying. Do you know what I mean? It's like, no, why don't you just take some time to read a book, to maybe do some read, to do some writing, to kind of, you know, meditate on your thoughts, um, you know, really go through your arguments, maybe talk about them with a close friend and then present it to us. Now nah, he just wants to kind of spit them out there in real time, all the time in general. It's just like, and in general, it's kind of like um, what the Kardashians do, isn't it? They just kind of force themselves in front of you all the time. Even if you don't want, if you don't want to see them, they force themselves in front of you. That's why it's probably a perfect marriage that they were actually together, to be fair. Odie, Freud um uh, nikolai tesla uh da vinci matisse more matisse than picasso more african cubism than matisse uh so i just do that i throw out that kind of <laughs> for the liberals and that's the funny thing it's like uh well, liberals well, 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 let, me, let me hold you up on that on, on matisse <laughs> was, when you say you're more <laughs> when you say you're more matisse than picasso as somebody who's a fan of matisse and picasso actually i spent a lot of time in in saint tropez where they all used to paint together um wh why do you say matisse what is it about matisse that you feel an affinity with i think i feel like drake is more picasso and Ye is more matisse when we talked about 
when me and Drake went to do the show last year uh, for prison reform and to bring awareness to the uh, incarceration of Larry Hoover, mm -hmm. I sent him articles about the relationship of Matisse and Picasso and the need for these people. You, you need to have that. Spare a thought for Drake somewhere in some hot location with a couple baddies next to him sipping on some sipping on a fucking Mai Tai uh, you know a fucking Negroni or whatever or gin and tonic right having a good time getting his PP sucked on and then Kanye sending him fucking PDFs and articles on the relationship between fucking Picasso and Matisse why is he in a beach somewhere getting his hair braided chilling out having a good time just imagine <laughs> <laughs> you know i need to go into the bar and go to starbucks that's a you know that's a form of a, a modern day bar right and just hear drake song playing back to back and drake needs to go no a starbucks isn't a modern day bar to that same starbucks just in a different city and see people wearing yeezys and it puts us both back into the studio and, you know, God sets up these almost similar characters, these doppelgangers. It makes me it makes me really realize God has a sense of humor. Like, why is uh, John Galliano and Mark Jacobs the exact same human being just just placed in a different place? Or why uh, does God have it where Bernard Arnault cannot purchase Gucci, not even through the Chinese market? God does this to remind us that we are not God. Because when you take people like Elon Musk and... What? What? In his head, everything has to be like adversarial, right? There has to be some sort of battle between two people. Why can't they just both coexist? They don't need to... Has anybody ever sat down and thought that Mark Jacobs and John Galliano have a war? Especially considering John Galliano has been on ice for the last, what, four years or five years after he made, guess what, anti-Semitic comments that basically got him ostracized from fashion until he was welcomed back into it with Maison Martin Margiela. But he's been out for a while. Mark Jacobs has been doing his thing, obviously, with um, Heaven and his own namesake brand. But when does anybody ever thought that they were fighting or battling each other? He's just inventing these fucking wars in his head, isn't it? These fucking fashioned UFC fights that don't actually exist. And Bernard Arnault and uh, Trump or uh, Jack Ma, uh, Putin. You take these people. Free Jack Ma, by the way. He still hasn't been seen, I don't think, properly. Um, he went missing. Uh, because he made some disparaging comments about China and stuff and clearly they don't play and he hasn't been seen since I don't think at his own company so free Jack Ma AliExpress until I die well in their own space in their own environments you know we can start to feel like gods on earth but we are nothing in comparison to God and we are here actually to love one another and to collaborate and to make the world a better place. There's, you know, 1% of the world are placed in power and 99% of the world are the audience. So that 1% of the world, this idea of a United Nations, this is the world that needs to come together. This is the world that, I mean, here's the obvious go-to, Biden doesn't listen to Elon Musk. The president of the United States does not have meetings with Elon Musk. Hmm. That is Hey, here, come, 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 come get me. That's retarded. <laughs> I know. I'm oh, so you can say redacted on US TV, but you can't say fucking. That's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Look at Piers laughing. He kind of looks redacted, doesn't he, to be completely honest. But so I didn't even know that. You, you guys in the US have some weird laws around profanity, isn't it? How can you say fucking, but you can't say redacted? And I'm saying redacted because I don't want to get my channel taken down. I'm I'm not, I'm not a dummy. But why can you why can you say fucking? You can't say redacted. I guess because redacted is technically a term to describe something that's a some sort. Of, I don't know. Blah, blah, you know what I mean? But yeah, look at Kanye being an edge lord. Kanye should be on four chan, eight chan, or one of them places, isn't it? That's what he should have been at. He wasted his time fucking designing clothes. He should have been on there. Or, no, you know where Kanye should be. Kanye should be on Kiwi Farms. 
That's what he should be, really. He let it fly on Kiwi Farms. I'm not supposed to say that, Biden, but that's retarded, Biden. And, and I, you know, it's... Um... But to be fair to him, though, he did say Biden not meeting Elon Musk is redacted. But if you read all the headlines in the news, they make it seem like, like, look, let, let's see it right now. Let's do it in real time. Uh, Kanye West Joe Biden right let's see I'm pretty sure all the all of them see look see every single one says Kanye calls the president redacted he didn't say that Kanye some thinks Joe Biden see is redacted he didn't say that he didn't say that he said the fact that Joe Biden doesn't meet with Elon Musk to maybe discuss alternative energy source sources, um, space travel, uh, transportation issues, whatever else they can tap his brain for because he, he thinks he's a super genius. That's what he meant. But they're making it seem like he called the president redacted, which he obviously didn't. So now you can kind of see where Kanye kind of has some points in the thing that he's talking about. The media propaganda and the way that they spin certain things because he's not on the right side of the political aisle is really kind of heinous, to be fair. Because you know, you just heard what he said. He didn't call Biden redacted. He said him not meeting Elon Musk was redacted. But, you know, these people don't care, man. And obviously, because I've been deemed with mental health, all this, I have the right to use whatever words that I like to use. Well, that's interesting. So, so, so hey, pick, ask okay. another question. Well, yeah, let me ask you on that. So you just <laughs> you just said something very inflammatory about President Biden. It will, as you know, offend a lot of people. Yeah. And it will particularly offend people who work in mental health. You say you should not use a word like retarded. Uh, but you say that because you yourself have had mental health issues, that entitles you to use that kind of word as an insult. Now, I would say that's an arguable point. I've had, my, my issue, my issue is I've had mental health allegations. So d do you believe that you have any form of mental illness? I believe that I suffered from... <laughs> what kind of interview is this? Do you believe you have mental illness? Chris Coma asking him, are you okay mentally? Like, <laughs> this is the patch, the, the, they're patronizing him horribly, man. <laughs> because I think they're being concerned. They're like, dude, do, are you mentally unwell? Because you're going after the Jews and you're saying they control everything. But if they do control everything, they're going to ruin your career. You might, you might want to just like simmer down on the anti-Semitism and just chill. And he's like, nah, man, I got to expose the Jews, man. They control the world, man. And then now look, he's crying because they're not letting him do concerts and shit. From exhaustion. I believe that I suffered from exhaustion. I suffered from being lied to constantly by the people around me. And I believe those things can drive anyone to a point of maximum exhaustion. But I also believe that I'm extremely brilliant and I'm here to make the world a better place. And I'm tired of the left media trying to pick on me. And y'all picked on me enough. And y'all. Victim Ye is the worst version of Ye ever. One minute he's a bully, next minute he's a top five. No, one minute he's a victim, next minute he's a top five writers in human history. Like, you have to pick one, you can't be both. I know there's sometimes two truths or two things because it's at the same time, but you can't be both. You can't be the victim and the bully at the same damn time. It doesn't work that way. Especially someone like, yeah, we don't believe it. We don't believe you're being picked on. Like the good example of it is that fucking White Lives Matter t-shirt. The White Lives Matter t-shirt for me was a good evidence that this guy knows what he's doing because he put that shirt out to be inflammatory and it worked, right? One lady decides to be quite critical of it and write a pretty good rebuttal as to why she didn't like the t-shirt why she think it was kind of but you know it was maybe well-intentioned but it didn't hit the mark why she felt like it didn't go cover a good place and it might be dangerous and words are powerful whatever really good critique on it pretty fair nothing nasty he ripped her a new one embarrassed her basically called her fat without without calling her fat said she has no style took the piss out of her boots all this sort of nonsense right he's kind of you would call quote-unquote bullying but then now he's crying and saying he's being picked on 
No, you picked on her. You picked on that lady because she decided that she didn't like your T-shirt and wanted to write a post about it quickly because she's a journalist. Come on, man. Yeah, I finally touched the person that's not going to stand, that's not going to take it anymore. And that's part of the reason why I'm on Uncensored, because what they'd like is for me to be quiet. Interesting thing about racism and cancel culture, it's kind of similar, right? It, racism works on itself. I can go into the Gucci store at age 18, and I just assume that people think that I'm about to steal, so I buy more things. With cancel culture, when I brought Marilyn Manson on stage, by the way, categorically, I've never walked into a designer store and because I feel like I'm being racially profiled, I'd go and buy more things. If anything, if I feel like I'm being racially profiled or I'm being followed, I'll just leave. I know there's this American thing that people do, especially rappers, they'll go to a department store, especially when they're on tour in another country and they'll feel like they're being followed and they'll get really angry, belligerent with the security guards or the staff members and then be like buying more stuff and throwing money around saying, see, I can put all this sort of stuff. I don't think that makes you look like a freedom fighter. It doesn't really look cool. If anything, it's quite redacted to go into a store, feel like you're being racially profiled and then spend money there. The last thing I want to do is give you money. So I'll just leave. So this whole idea of like buying more to make yourself feel like you're comfortable, you belong, is really, really weird. Age with me when he was dealing with allegations, my stepbrother Marilyn was canceling himself. What they had so many people comment on my White Lives Matter t-shirt. There's people who are saying right there in Fashion Week, when are you going home? I'm so afraid. People thought I was going to cancel myself. I'm not going to cancel myself. I'm going to keep on delivering what I feel, because guess what? It's very split opinions, by the way. If I talk to a black person that makes under a million dollars a year, they really are, they really relate to the George Floyd comments and feel hurt that I would even uh, p bring it up and question the approach. They have multiple documentaries on the death of JFK, but we're just supposed to believe this one media outlet version that preyed on our trauma and our pain. And then if I talk to rich black people uh, or white people, Jew or Catholic or atheist, they're really into the Jewish media com uh, comment because it affects their business interests. Okay, well, look, and it let was me, really right, interesting. Right. I'm not even gonna bother. I'm not even gonna bother. Let Same me, all right, we, let yeah. me just pick you up yeah. on, on the two things you've mentioned. The first right. one is what you said about George Floyd, and the, the reality of that is not a media interpretation of how he died because the Hennepin County Chief Medical Examiner concluded that Floyd died from cardiopulmonary arrest. His heart stopped complicated by the way the police restrained him and compressed his neck. Now, he also said there were other contributing conditions. Wait, wait, wait. Well, hang on, let me finish. There were other contributing okay. conditions, yeah. narrowed arteries, high blood pressure and fentanyl intoxication. But although these were significant conditions, he said, uh, and things that played a role in the death, they didn't directly cause the death. The cause of death was what that policeman what, what, did with his knee to George that Floyd. Person? Well, why would a coroner lie? What makes you believe that? Why would a coroner lie? Okay, because but he could uh, give... okay, then what makes you believe Candace Owens or Candace? What makes you believe Candace Owens? That's the thing. It's okay to watch documentaries and feel like you're a bit informed because the person's gone to the effort to fucking put different sources together and give you an alternative perspective and make you think about things that you didn't maybe think about, whatever it may be, cool. But then you should use that documentary as a basis to do further research and dive deep. The fact that some people watch documentaries and TV series and legitimately think that what they're watching is autobiographical is legitimately insane. Or like... It's like a fucking real life thing. It's like it's happening right now. It's like you guys are people that think of that are just literally out of them out. Like it's like it's 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 maybe like flat earth is a little bit kind of. It's like you watch a documentary on flat earth, which is one thing fair, but then when you're presented with information that contradicts your flat earth theory, you should be open to watching it and listening to it. But they don't. They completely dismiss it. No, 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 no. It's a lie. It's a conspiracy. It's a you know mainstream media manipulation. It's like what.
paid to lie yeah, but, because he could get paid to lie because yeah, he's talking I watched in the it, press. I watched it for the eight minutes. The majority of the press. Right, but I watched it for eight minutes. Now tell me this. Have you seen the, the Candace Owens BLM documentary? I have watched uh, some of that documentary, but here's what I would say to you. When you watch that video of George Floyd... I, no, it's not a but. It's not, it's not, well, I haven't it's watched not, the whole not thing. A I, I need the whole you thing. to watch. I, I know. I, okay. I, I know so what you said I want about... You to, I, I know Candace. Gonna, wait, I'm going to finish. Yeah. La, la, It's all right. You don't okay, have you to know do what that. Means. that means. I know what it means. That, that, you, la, la, la means be quiet. No, 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 no. On TV, this man's la, la, la. <laughs> I despise the Kardashians. I do. I despise them as a family. I despise every member of that clan. I think they're horrible for young girls coming up. I think they set a dangerous precedent. I think they get indulged and fucking exalted for being for being just who they are. Nothing else interesting. They don't bring anything but to the table apart from what they what they flipping wear and shit. I hate them all. But I have to be honest. The more I hear Kanye speak the more I have sympathy for Kim. She was with this guy for eight years. Four kids. Living with his, with her family who are, you know, pretty, you know, normal people outside of the, you know, polluting, flipping young girls' minds and shit. Imagine what she had to put up with day to day. Kim Kardashian. Spare a fault for her, bruv. Spare a fault for Chloe having to get in between them fighting. Spare a fault for... Kendall and Kylie Jenner having to be around seeing this grown guy who they kind of maybe idolized and thought it was quite cool turn into a weirdo in front of their eyes. Spare a for the kids having to watch their dad go from being Bible guy, church guy, Wyoming guy to suddenly hanging around with Candace fucking Owens. Spare a for that family what they had to go through. They saw him change in real time. When Kim got together with Kanye, he was wearing fucking, you know, um, he was wearing fucking Louboutin trainers and fucking Balmain jeans and bomber jackets and stuff and rings and stuff and cool glasses. Now he's dressed like a hobo. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he used to take fucking Kim on dates to Paris on like a random thing. Just jump on a private jet, go to Paris to eat at their favorite restaurant. They'd, bu they'd buy out an entire cinema just to go watch a movie and shit, right? They'd go to all these fucking red carpet things. And then slowly but surely, he turned into Sunday service guy, crying about Jesus and shit. And now he's attacking the Jews. Like, just imagine what they had to go through as a family. Just imagine. Gosh. And then let me finish. Bobby, you sir. did interrupt my All question. Right, so <laughs> with the BLM, no, I wasn't, I wasn't finished. You're pressing agenda. You haven't seen the whole thing. I don't so have an agenda. I just read you what the coroner said. So we can have 20 different perspectives on how JFK died, mm -hmm. but us as black people, not only are... So, so J George Floyd isn't a hero on the right-hand side. Let's think about it. George Floyd isn't a hero. They, they described him as a drug addict. They described him as an abuser. They described him as a, as a goon, whatever they described him as to kind of discredit what he went through and what he suffered and his untimely passing and to minimize what the police officers did. But then on this side, again, he's now trying to equate George Floyd's death with JFK. So George Floyd is JFK now. He's JFK level. Cool. Can we only vote one way? We're not allowed to have any other perspectives. And that the area for George Floyd, where he passed, the murder rate is up 50 percent. And Not nothing, true. this is so-called movement, but it didn't move blacks anywhere. Right, now listen. So I, me I, as a I, black okay, yeah. person. I will say yeah. there are legitimate questions yeah. about the Black Lives Matter. Did he say earlier he doesn't like to be described as a black person? That black is like a reduction of like being nobody or something. Now suddenly he's black. Look, look, he's got his like a, uh, he's got his a, uh, I'm gonna spark controversy face. <laughs> This man's nearly 50 years old with four kids trying to be an edgelord. It's absolutely great to see in real time. I'm not going to lie. It's a movement, no question. Um, but on the specific point about how George Floyd died, I don't think it's in question about what actually killed him. It was that police officer what with his mean, knee it, on his what, neck. What is in question 
It isn't. It isn't question. I'm questioning. Well, you can as question a black it, but, person. But what you're questioning is friends, a coroner report. As a, hey, are, do you do you have friends that were killed by police officers? Do you have friends that were locked up? Do you have friends? Do you have uh, people aborting half your race? No. So I am the black person with the black experience that's worth eleven billion dollars and is the most influential person on the planet, and I am questioning it. Okay. You and are I have a right to question you, it. Absolutely. You can't tell me. You can't tell me. You can't tell me with your accent that me as an American Jew black person that I cannot question that death and question the means behind I'm that not, I'm was not, put on camera. I'm, I'm not saying you to can't traumatize. It. I'm not fin la 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 means let me finish. Okay. I'm not finished <laughs> talking. So we can't <laughs> I have to find it. I've got to find that video of DSP doing la la la. Let me see if I can find it. DSP la la la. <laughs> oh. Someone, someone must have dark side feel la la la. Let me see if I can find it. Dark side feel la la. <laughs> I can't believe he did that. La la la. <laughs> With your accent. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh man, I wish I could remember what video it was. Darkside feels arguing with somebody, like a troll comes on his stream and he starts saying stuff. He's like, la 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 la. He starts doing that. Oh, I wish I could find it, man. Fuck, how am I going to find this? Maybe it's on the DSP forums, maybe? I don't know, let's see. Uh, la la la. Let's see. No, no way. Damn it, man. I wish I could. I wish I knew what video it was. Doesn't matter anyway, it doesn't matter. I cannot I uh, see because you distract my thoughts and then you try to make me look like a crazy person and you feel you have the right to cut me off and I've proven you you guys don't want it with me. This is like Terminator 20. You've never seen this before. You've never seen this before. So I, I want no one to play with me. Mm -hmm. I have the right to question because that videotape was used to traumatize my people and force us into the Democratic vote. Hey, George Soros, you're a real competitor. I respect you. I'm worth more money than you, and I have more influence than you, and have, you know, Pierce Morgan from a different country saying, well, the, uh, I'm not going to do an English accent because that would be racist. Uh, I'm funny, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Fine. I the... know you, can, you can do that. As I said to you, the show is uncensored yet. You can say what the hell you like, right? But that doesn't mean I can't pick you up on a few things, right? You accept that. I accept that, but you try to say it is unquestionable because this one Dr. Fauci said this. I know it wasn't Dr. Fauci, but I'm mm. just giving an example. Oh my God! He's equating a coroner's report to Dr. Fauci. <laughs> this is like the textbook, like right wing kind of like talking points he's ticking off here. Doesn't like Fauci. Doesn't believe in coroner's reports. Questions everything the media puts out. Um. Oh God where we hear from even Google like people feel like you know if you Google it it's factual there's so much non-factual information about me on Google but then I still believe Google and people pay to get certain information to the top of Google but this is good this is keep going where, okay. where else you want to go with it hey, so all right I'm done man I'm 20 minutes in I'm going to jump over to other topics but if you want to check out the whole entire thing you can Kanye is on a mad one uh, he's doing what he needs to do. I think in conclusion, what I would say to kind of offer a counter narrative on it and to kind of maybe offer a different interpretation, which is not the same thing everyone's saying about his nuts is crazy. I have to say, though, it is quite weirdly refreshing to see somebody of his level, of his caliber of stardom and fame basically go in this direction. Because we know in society and in media that you can't really be a top tier commercial well-known person and also be conservative or also be Republican, also be right wing. People just don't have it. You can't be outwardly that. You have to kind of hide it, 
do it behind closed doors, which a lot of people say a lot of people in Hollywood are actually secretly conservative, especially the ones who are older and wealthier. It's kind of a thing that usually happens to a lot of people. You want to obviously keep your money and shit. And maybe people on that side of the aisle have more policies in place that can help you keep your money. But the fact that he's willing to risk everything, like he legitimately has risked everything. He's risked his family, his marriage, his friendships, his business, his long-term personal future, his own fortune. Like he's legitimately put it all on the line because he's in love with or he kind of loves that side of the aisle in terms of the conservative Republican side of things and their, and that kind of right-wing grift. He's really dying on his sword. And he's really about that talker. He's walking the walk in a big way. And he's not backing down. He's doubling, tripling down on everything that he's saying. Do you know what I mean? So it's weirdly admirable. But what he's saying is incredibly divisive, incredibly hurtful to obviously the Jewish community, is incredibly hurtful to the black community instead of what he's going on and how he's minimizing the stuff that's happening with all that stuff that happened to George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter move, movement overall. We all know Black Lives, Black Lives Matter as a charity is fucking fake and a fraud. We all know that. But as a charity, they've done a lot. Sorry, so as a movement, they've done a lot in terms of having that phrase be something that's entered the public lexicon, waking up certain people to what it's like to be a black person in some of these countries and having to interact with the police, exposing police brutality. All these kind of things have been pretty important in terms of the conversations that have come out of it. Has anything concrete come of it? Probably not. All those companies that put black squares on Instagram profiles, all those companies that said they were going to change their hiring practices and all that stuff, have they really done it and followed through? Of course they hasn't. But of the conversation, I think, was more important. But this guy is smutting the entire thing off of the back of his right-wing talking points. He's calling into question the way this guy died, George Floyd, which we all saw with our own fucking eyes right he's believing everything a fucking documentary says has been made by a human but then he's not willing to believe a human that is whole sole intention is to fucking put together coroner's reports and death certificates and ascertain how somebody passed away it's all pretty out there stuff but it doesn't really need to be said so it is what it is check it out if you want to check it out i kind of laugh about it because i don't think it's serious but hey what can you do let's 